Hi folks and welcome to DevTrends. Today we're gonna implement CSS Keylogger and speak about machine learning in JavaScript. We are all pretty confident about some basic security in the web provided by our browsers. Foreign JavaScript cannot be executed without special permissions. There is no trivial way for hackers to execute some malicious code on users' browsers and websites are being forced to use HTTPS protocol by vendors. So all seems to be pretty secure, but it always has its exceptions. And one of these is going from non-JavaScript environment CSS is always considered as a non-dynamic way to change our application appearance, and that's all. And nobody really thinks that CSS could potentially create some vital security holes. But it really can, and this is easier than we can imagine. And there is a recent disturbance about CSS security started with this repository, which is named CSS Keylogging. And it contains a server and a Chrome extension implemented a simple yet effective CSS Keylogger based on some pretty trivial features of both CSS background URL and React way to update HTML attributes. But actually, this is a really old topic which appropriately started in uh, 2010-12. Uh, with a presentation from Mario Hederick about scriptless browser attacks. And all the history about the topic is available in this awesome live overflow video. You can check it out in the description link. We'll just implement the basics. So let's switch to code. Uh, so the basic idea is to send request to a server with the help of background CSS property and URL value. So this is it. And if a selector matches this property, a get request is sent to specified URL to retrieve content from it. So when we provide a, a value to our URL, uh, this value is intended by browsers to be an image, but we can send any get request, literally any. So let's make use of this feature. Let's now switch to code. Let's create some basic files. Here is our empty directory. Let's create, for example, uh, index.html, index.css, index.j6 as we've been, uh, we are using React here, some form element, and let's create our basic base file for our small server. Let's create all of this. Okay, here we are. Let's add this folder. CSS, CSS Keylogger, here is it. Okay. Save all. Mm. Here we are. So let's install necessary packages for us. Let's first initiate npm uh, repository, npm package. So let's install here React, React DOM, of course, uh, some Babel presets for React. We'll be using uh, parcel, so we need some just basic packages here. And it's, let's install Polka server. It's a small server we've discussed sometime earlier in our dev trends. So let's wait till it installs. And let's actually switch to code already. Let's create some basic layout. Uh, here we include our index CSS file and here we'll let's create a main tag and here let's include index g6 let's save it okay and let's switch then our index.js6 file. Let's import React here. 
import render from React DOM and let's let's render and let's import our form component. It's empty for now, but we'll put some code later. Okay, import form and let's uh, render it. Form and let's render to our main selector, among our main DOM element, I mean. So let's pretty it. Oh, and also we need to have here a Babel RC, of course. Uh, yeah, use curse, of course. Here we just add presets with our two label packages and and react save close okay so let's switch to our form gs6 and let's implement some basic um, so-called controlled components of react so it means that on every input in our input element the appropriate value um, state value will change and uh, with this change with this uh, set state method the attribute the HTML attribute of this element of this input will also change this is crucial for our CSS keylogger so let's here export default class okay let's uh, import react and component here from react key extends component and here let's add a constructor with props as usual super props and so let's set a state basic state here with empty value for now And let's make a render function, which will render our form. Actually, we don't need a full form. We just need one input element with the type password. And let it be value, this state value. And let's create on change handler. Uh, this handle change for example and let's add this handle change method event and on, ev on every change of the input will set state value and here we get uh, the value of the input of the user's input so that's pretty it and by the way this is the way uh, Instagram works uh, when you input any password in password field when logging in to Instagram let's save it let's double check all of this uh, index CSS is empty for now let's switch to our terminal and let's on parcel let's check if we got parcel here uh, it's a bit old here but let's check how it works maybe it works straight away okay, it's building let's wait a bit okay it's built now let's go to localhost one two three four and we can see that there is an input. Let's open the tools. See our input. I'll close this one. So here is our password. Let's check how the value is changed. You can see that on every change of, of this input, the appropriate HTML value attribute is being changed. 
And if you go to Instagram and open the tools and check the value of the password field of the login form, you can see the similar behavior. So now we are to add our CSS code, which will make request to our server. So for that, we'll go to this CSS keylogger extension. Let's just take this CSS style. So what it does, it basically adds a selector for each value of the password field for each latent character out of there and on each uh, character, on each change of the uh, at value attribute HTML, it will send a GET request to appropriate endpoint of our server. So you can see there is partial selector of the value. So if you in uh, if we input a uppercase A letter, it will send to uppercase A endpoint of our server. So it's pretty it. Let's copy all of these and let's go to our index CSS and let's save it. Okay, it's pretty printed already. It's great. So let's save it and let's double check our server again. Just reloading, for example. Here's our style sheet and let's go to network. And let's see if it works. Oops, not here, but here. So you can see there are requests going, but um, they are failing because there is no server yet. So let's add some basic server on Polka. It will be the last step for us. So let's create app. Uh, Polka is, uh, has pretty similar API to Express. So we um, create a uh, get middleware, which is basically a router, which uh, a route which uh, takes get requests. And here we can just console log rec params key and returning return response and simple empty end response and let's listen to through sounds and port of our local host and let's create a new tab here and let's just run our server there is no out output, but our server is working. And let's just reload our client, our code. Uh, let's input some password, like Hunter2, the most popular password out of there. Okay, there are some, ah, there is typo, sorry. Rec params, params key. Let's save it. Rec params key, okay. And let's run it again. Hunter, you can see our requests are returning status to uh, 200. It means everything is okay. And you can see our server is catching all of these requests and showing us the passwords because of this. Uh, hacky CSS keylogger. So that's pretty it. Uh, worth noting that uh, this CSS injection can be accomplished with any, for example, Chrome or other browsers extension. So it's, it can be just put in code and uh, some basic trivial security uh, patterns from the vendor, from the browser won't work with CSS because they are aimed at JavaScript code. But uh, 
for now, no, nobody saw that you can do such things with simple CSS. And this topic emerged lately because of this, uh, uh, this way of changing, uh, of changing HTML attributes by React. So you can see there is a similar issue in the React repository about syncing value attributes for these controlled inputs, for controlled components of the form and it's still open and it means that uh, this code is pretty can be pretty easily executed on the user side without users knowing what's going on and just send some malicious uh, send your passwords to malicious server easily as you can see so machine learning is a hot topic in recent years it's still not mainstream and there are still few really practical cases for machine learning but it's growing and growing fast and python is historically the most ml oriented language as we got such outstanding libraries written in python as keras and tensorflow but what with javascript well there are opinions that javascript is not enough professional for machine and deep learning but as for me there is no big truth in these words as similar opinions emerged after first release of node.js some developers made jokes about server-side javascript like what the heck is that and there is no chance that buggy browser language could make use on the server and look where we got now javascript is four years in a row the most popular language in the world both on the client and the server and going back to machine learning there are already numerous popular ml libraries written in javascript and among the most prominent ones there is deep learn js which provided similar to tensorflow api and as it states it brings hardware accelerated machine learning right to the browser. And on the other side, there is Propel, which works both in browser and on the server and makes heavy use of GPU as well. It is pretty new library, but already has plenty of stars on GitHub uh, for machine learning library written in TypeScript. And moreover, if we check the contributors, we can see that one of the top contributors to Propel is Ryan Dell here, who is the creator of Node.js itself. By the way, Ryan is going to make a presentation about Propel in, uh, on JSConf EU, which will take place in Berlin in June. And so even if we are not going to visit it, I'm pretty sure there will be a video on JSConf YouTube channel shortly after the presentation. So we can check it out later. And also there is a BrainJS, which seems to be the simplest library for machine learning in JavaScript, but it is a really great way to start learning ML concepts from scratch. And if you haven't yet decided whether you need to jump into MLDL train, there are two awesome arguments that popped up recently to convince you and help with starting. Firstly, there is an outstand a really outstanding 12 minute length video on how to build a simple machine learning algorithm from scratch. Uh, it's called Machine Learning Tutorial for Beginners from Learning Code Academy. And here also implements a model to switch text color based on currently selected background color. This is really simple and entertaining video that will help you to get your head around the, basic, the basics on how to create and train your first model. So you should definitely check it out. And secondly, there is no less awesome post from Daniel Simmons who guides you through the creation of your own neural network from scratch. And it, it's called, you can build a neural network in JavaScript, <laughs> even if you don't really understand how it works, how net neural network works, but it's really easy to read and enjo enjoyable as well. So worth noting as well that both these tutorials use BrainJS library, this one, and are definitely worth checking if you're ever wondering how to get into machine learning basic without any struggle. So that's all for today, folks. All the links are in the description below. Thank you for watching and stay trendy.